manager of Coggish United after today's match. Cliff, what are your, what are your thoughts? Um, disappointed, um, but you know, I think the better team on the day one. Um, we huffed and puffed. Uh, we, you know, it came down to a really sloppy mistake that opened the door, and once you're behind, it's you know, ch chasing the game. You know, the other team were well suited for the counter attack, and um, as much as we kept pushing forward, they were really quick on a break, and eventually, you know, it, it told and. Um, you know, I've got no gripes. Um, for the morning I had this get into the game, uh, I think the team changed about five times and uh, it, even just in the warm-up we lost George. So, you know, that was the best I could put out for the uh, players I had available today. That's an interesting point because a question that was actually raised that was been asked to actually ask you is, do you think, based on who was available, you picked the best team mm -hmm. um, in the best positions? So, the personnel, did you think they pla you placed them in the best formation, the best position in each player? Yeah, I mean... Um, and if so, why? Why do you think that? I don't do things without backing it up statistically. So, yeah. um, I moved Danny Scott into the centre of uh, midfield um, and he's arguably one of the best decision makers um, in, in, the, in the club. And he's one of the best ball winners. Yeah. And uh, as you can see out there, he wears his heart on his sleeve and goes to, goes to war for you. Yeah. So uh, he's always solid when he's on the right hand side, um, but greedily you want that through, through a larger part of the, of the game. So yeah. um, I had a lot of right backs maybe three or four today, so it was a change that I could comfortably make knowing that I still had adequate cover. Um, but yeah, it's just, um, like I said, from what I had available and for what I wanted them to do in the game, those were the best players and um, unfortunately it wasn't good enough on the day. What do you make of the accusations that were being banded about that this team doesn't have Plan B, or a, rec a, a clear Plan B, because it seemed like Plan A was getting stifled, and there wasn't the ability to change it. That was one of the things that was being banded around today. Um, today was slightly different than usual because of the personnel. Um, probably wasn't as much of a Plan B, but we always have a plan all the way to F. Yeah. To. Um, sort of figure out the opposition and see if we can get the better of them. But with lesser options, you get less of an opportunity to um, try out different things. And, you know, you had to be respectful of the opposition and, and be wary of the threat they carried. And today the threat they carried was a really pacey counter attack, which doesn't matter what system you put up against it. If you've got too many people forward, and they catch you one on one on the other end, you're going to be in trouble. So, you know, the the, the main part, which, funny enough, it was, I said to the boys at half time, it is you're playing a, a team that play identical to you. They break with speed and you break with speed, but they just so happen to be the quicker team. Yeah. So, it's something that we're not used to playing against. Yeah. But that's what the boys from London uh, bring to this league. Uh, Lopez Tavares are very similar. And, um, you know, it's not going to be many teams that are going to be able to match our speed and our fitness, and that, that was one of them. It was quite telling to watch Andy Fennell in particular, who's obviously been one of your leading lights, in particular with George, off the pitch. It must have put extra pressure on him today, even if, even if you're not putting that pressure on him in his own mind, must have put extra pressure on him to deliver. It did seem that he was quite easily stifled by them today because it seemed like they were able to match his speed, if not even get in a position where his speed was nullified quite well? Um, I think, um, putting it into perspective, um, this is a team that came down yeah. into our league, not a team that came yeah. up. Yeah. So if you grasp where they were and where yeah. we were last, yeah. last year, there was two leagues difference. Yeah, of course. So the fact that we was able to compete with them today, you know, last season we didn't even think we'd be playing against a team like this so um, the positives are that you know we're still on the, on the up 
um, you know, they were in a position where they've sort of come down and they're fighting to get back to the league that they came from. And we're coming up into this division and as it currently stands, we're still ahead of them. So yeah. you can't be doing that much wrong. No, of course. If, uh, you know, the results are slightly better than the team that came down. Well, in keeping with what you said and paying them due respect, mm -hmm. it has to be said, I've seen all the home games this season. They're, they are the best team that I've actually seen come down, come here and play. I mean, and I, I, would, I saw the Sawbridge Worth game in the Cup and Sawbridge Worth were obviously a division higher. Mm -hmm. The way they played, Same division. Yeah, the way they, the way they played, mm. fantastic. Mm. They just seem to be very aware of their deficiency, their own flaws, mm -hmm. their own strengths, and they maximised their strengths mm -hmm. and limited their flaws. Because mm -hmm. there were times, for example, when the goalkeeper was kicking mm -hmm. quite poor, mm -hmm. the right back quite poor sometimes with his distribution, mm -hmm. but the boys couldn't, didn't seem like they could be maximise those flaws for their well, own advantage. Well, I, I said to the boys, um, you know, that's the target that we're trying to get to is, is to become a team similar to the Hackney Week and play a similar style. Yeah. Um, and I said they're probably like a year ahead of us in, yeah. in progression. Um, and even just listening to them on the field, communicating, talking, the information they're giving each other is a lot better than ours. But we've got a lot of young players who um, still got to learn the game. So unfortunately, uh, you have to go through games like that and hold your hand up and say on the day, you know, Hackney were a better team. Absolutely, absolutely. Do you, do you feel pressured by the fact that we've now got three, de three defeats in a row? Is it three? Brighton C, Braintree, this. Uh, Wibbenhome is in between. Oh, Wibbenhome is yeah. in between, but three defeats at home in a row. Um, not really. Um, you know, um, we took the positives out of the Brighton and Sea game. When are you ever going to play against a team three leagues above you? Yeah. And then Sods Law, they go on better and they put a team five leagues above you. Yeah. <laughs> so the fact that we kept in the game as long as we did um, was a credit to the boys. So that's not you know, down to them. That was unfortunate. And today, probably, arguably, <laughs> It was a harder game than all the other ones. <laughs> oh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> so you know, um, you know, you just got to look at it realistically and just say that this is where we are, and we're a developing club. We're only two years old, and we're playing against clubs that have been around for fifty years or so. So, well, well of course, I mean, one thing that was, I'm not picking here, but it probably seems like I am. Uh, there seems like. There's a lack of cuteness about our team, about Coggeshall sometimes, just with the fact that they are all or nothing, whereas sometimes it would look like they could have done with taking a foul, taking taking a, a, a delay just to sort of regroup a bit more, whereas um, they're so honest sometimes. Yeah, no, I think that is um, uh, part and partial with working with young players because yeah. um, they're not looking at that side of the game. No one's going to get into football to just do all the gamesmanship and to cheat. No, no, they, no. They, you know, there's, there's been a numerous times where we've said to, you know, Andy, with the speed that you've got and somebody touches you, you know, it, it would be criminal if you don't go down. Oh, when no, you, when no. you're but he, yeah. he, he's not that type no, of person. I mean, he, I, would, he, he would always play to the no. laws of the game. Yeah, for, I mean, forgive me, what I mean by that is some of the boys are actually getting fouled. Mm. I mean, you could quite clearly see it from where I was sitting around the halfway line you could see some of the boys are actually getting physically fouled mm. and they don't take the foul. They would rather stay on their feet. And particularly when the game was getting quite frenetic at mm. a certain point, they really settle down a bit and then they can build up the momentum again. Well, I, I think it's one of those things that's not in our control. And, yeah. uh, again, it's, you've got to respect the referee's decision. Of course. He doesn't give it, he doesn't give yeah. it, so you've just got to keep playing um, yeah. and, and, and hope that you get the decision. But yeah. there's no point playing for it if... Of course. <laughs> You know, you can yeah. stand up and you can go and uh, keep the possession of the ball, yeah. but um, that, that's something that the boys are going to have to get used to. The better they're doing in the league, the more teams are going to start coming to us with, with that kind of respect and that kind of determination because it's the back end of the season. Yeah, of course. That's going to be difficult because they've got to survive or they've got to stay in the league and they're fighting for something. and. The other teams are up the top of the table and it's just every game is a cup final, every game is a crunch game. 
and um, you know we're, we're, we're not used to being in these positions uh, in, in this level it's the first time we're in this league of course so we've got to take each game as it comes and, and learn from it so that's what we're trying to do does it derail your promotion push if there was a promotion push does it do you get that feeling that it stifles that a degree um like i said um the only people that are talking about promotion are the people outside the dressing room really. so well i'm just taking one game at a time because you know if you'd have said at the start of the season you'd be six in the table at this oh, stage it's amazing it's you, you take it so um you know we just have to see what comes uh, we can't predict what's going to happen in the future can't look at the fixtures that we've got coming up and say we're going to win on Tuesday, win on Saturday. And no, of course. It doesn't really work like that. And, and um, as I've said to the boys, it's not like we've gone out there and, and played total football and had all possession of the ball and won all the games we won. I said, we've had to work for every single win we've had this season. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why we've got so many wins, because we've worked for it. Oh. So it's not going to be a case of turn up and, and, and get a result. It's always going to be a case of whether you're playing bottom of the table, like we did uh, when we played Wibbenau. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of people would have thought we would have won that more comfortable, but that was a tough, tough game as well. So yeah. we, we're just doing what we have to do to get across the line and, and then go again in the next game. OK, well, we're talking about the next game. Um, lessons learned from today to take forward? Oh, yeah, yeah, um, you know, Hopefully we'll have players back who were injured. Um, like I said, uh, there was no uh, Crippo today, there was no George Smith who had, had to drop out uh, yeah. uh, at the last minute before the game. Um, yeah, we should be back to at least adequate strength and um, we'll be better prepared for the game. Pleasing to have the game in just a couple of days' time just to get this out of your system. Yes, you know, it's, it's terrible when you win and then you've got another game on a Tuesday and it sort of mars the win because you want to enjoy it for a whole week, but it works the same way the other way around. So when you lose, you can quickly get your head back around another game and change what you did wrong and um, go again. Well, let's hope we can move forward. In fact, you're in as always. Thank you very much. Thank you.